So I hear you are thinking of buying an electric car or maybe you just bought one and one of the first questions people have when they're doing this is how long does it take to charge and do I need to put a special charging station in my house? So the first answer is no, you usually don't have to do that because no matter how big your car's battery is, it might take like multiple days to charge if it's drained to empty like in the case of a big Tesla. Um, even if you have just the cheapo charger that every car comes with that plugs into a regular plug, that charging cord adds about four miles of range per hour. So if the typical person parks their car at night, plugs it in from like 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., that's 12 hours of charging, it's going to add about 50 miles of charge overnight. So if you don't need to drive more than 50 miles a day, on average, you never need to put one of these expensive more expensive high voltage chargers in your driveway. However, in this video, we're gonna show how to install the high speed charger because some people need more speed and it's more convenient, I admit, and it saves you the price of paying an electrician potentially $1,000 to do it. So let's get to that right now. So here we are at my own electrical panel, which happens to be in my garage. And it's, uh, Something most people are afraid of, but I would like to demystify a little bit because it's not nearly as dangerous nor as scientific and complicated as people assume it is. So you've probably just seen this side of your panel and flipped breakers when something has gone out or when you need to turn it off to make a safe change to like a light fixture or whatever. But behind the scenes, there is some interesting stuff in here which we can step through right away. Ooh. So as you can see, I've already done something that only a qualified professional should do and I'm still alive. And the secret is knowing what's dangerous and what is not in these things. Let's take a closer look at what everything does inside this box. So perhaps the best way to understand how this thing works is to follow the streams of power which flow through these wires. So in this house, the power comes in from underground and then it comes in through these two wires. You could think of it as one of them being plus 120, the other one being minus 120, and the voltage between them is 240, which depending where you are in which country, sometimes that's referred to as 220 or 208, but really it's all the same. Okay, so here's what happens. These wires come up through here and you notice they go into something called the main breaker. And in mine, it is a, looks like 125 amp service. So electricity goes this way, it goes through the breaker and then into these two rails. So these are, thing, these are live right now, so I'm not gonna touch them, but there's copper rail down down one side and another copper rail going down the other side. Each of those is connected to one of these wires. And then all these circuits are basically on one of the wires or the other. And when you have a high voltage circuit, which we're about to add for the purposes of this video, it is spanning the two wires and that's a 240 volt circuit. That'll make more sense in a second once we look in detail when I have this thing powered off. But for now, you can take a look at how, even when it's powered up, I can safely turn off a breaker, pry it out with my hands. So now I have a disconnected breaker that happens to be hanging from its output wire. So the way these work is they suck power from that little prong that's at the back there. The prong goes into the bottom of the breaker, electricity flows through the breaker, and then out, in this case, through the red wire, off into the framing of the house. And this one happens to be connected to a dishwasher, as you can see. So if I tried to run my dishwasher now, it would not work. So normally you do all this with the power off. As soon as I flip off the breaker, then everything is safe and dead in this, bill, in this whole box. The only remaining dangerous part is these two wires. So if I were to touch those, even when the breaker is off, I would get a shock. Uh, everything else is safe to touch when the breaker is off. When the breaker is on, most of it is still safe to touch, even though I don't recommend it, except for all these exposed things are live and all of these screws are live when the breaker's on. So being Mr. Money Mustache and a little bit haphazard, I've wired entire houses while the power was on, just really carefully and wearing gloves and not touching anything. And I did that because my coworkers, the other carpenters needed power for their tools while I was slowly adding circuits throughout the day. So that's how potentially safe this can be if you know what you're doing. But uh, of course, don't really do that in real life. I'm just, I'm only mentioning that as an example of how this isn't nearly as hazardous a box as people think it is. 
So when you're getting ready to add a new circuit, you need to go to your electrical supply store or Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever and find the exact same kind that your box already uses. One way to do that is to unscrew one of your circuits and bring the little breaker in with you so you can find exactly what you need. Another thing to do is uh, make note of your box. So this one here, you can see it's a Cutler Hammer brand box. And then for whatever reason, that goes with the name Eaton, E-A-T-O-N. So I'm gonna be looking for Eaton breakers when I'm at the store. So the other design question is where are you gonna put your plugs once you figure out how to add stuff to the breaker? And then the electric car charger is gonna be a bit more strategic because we gotta think ahead on where I might wanna park future electric cars and which side of my garage or do I wanna park them on the driveway? Because it's uh, the further away I put it from this panel, the more work it is gonna to be to run the wires, especially if I want my wires hidden in my walls, which I always do. I'm not one of those people who like puts conduit across the surface of a garage because I think it needs to stay pristine and nice. Let's take a look at uh, my options here. So if you pardon my messy garage, this is the entrance door. I've got it sprayed with spray foam insulation in case you're curious why it looks like that. I'm going to have cars parked probably out there and then for special occasions, like if it's a winter day, I might drive it in here and park it here. So the ideal place for me to put this electric car charger is probably, I mean, if I put it here, that's really convenient. So the stuff we need for this install is really simple. I got it all laid out on my table here. Let's take a quick look at each thing, roughly in order of installation. First, we have something called a clamp connector, which is what allows us to pop the wire safely out of our electric box. Then we have some six gauge heavy duty beefy wire, which allows us to carry 50 amp current without overheating. Um, and of course a breaker of the right type for my box. There's your 50 amp breaker that's gonna click in. Then a electrical box, which mounts to your studs in the wall and the right type of plug for the electric car charger which is gonna go in the center of this box. I learned this trick from an electrician. If you're wiring big stuff like a dryer or a range or an electric car charger, you use a double box and put it in the middle instead of on the side because that gives you room to get these thick wires in here that are gonna connect into these terminals because they're thick, they're hard to bend. And then once you have that beauty on the wall, I have an attractive silver cover that's gonna go over top Gonna look like that which i think people are going to love and then you screw everything together and then you plug in the charger on the wall next to it so let's get it all installed right now so on the electric box i need to choose where to put this little pop out deal let's see there's all these different things on the bottom that are like perforations in the metal so i think i'm going to use this one here So for maximum niceness, I decided to put this electrical box a little bit over to the right because the Juice Box Pro has a very short cord. My idea is I want my plug here and the Juice Box hanging up nicely here. So we've got a three quarter inch spade bit. Just gonna drill this as high as I can. And then the wire goes through the hole into the box and you wanna have enough wire to go about halfway up the box in this case. So we got this guy sticking up about halfway and it's gonna to connect to the new circuit and to the neutral bar here and to the ground bar which is down here on this particular electric box and on this end i'm going to cut my six gauge wire just to stick out a few inches maybe five inches in front of the box and then strip it and connect the new plug this stuff is hard to cut 
If you can't cut it with your hand strength, I recommend a cordless grinder. Next, you want to feed this thick wire into the box before you mount the box because it's a lot easier to do it right now. And strip the wire to the back of the box. Strip each of these things, about half an inch of exposed wire. And finally, connect the plug. Red and black are your hotlines, and those are going to go to these side ones, which are sometimes called X and Y. Make sure you figure out this orientation up or down, depending on what kind of plug you want to plug into it. Awesome, looks great so far. Right, let's strip the wire. Make sure your power is off for all of this stuff. And now we just got four simple wires to connect. Neutral, ground, and the two hot ones. So I like to create a nice tidy little 90 degree bend in each of these. And then you can see my former electrician, whoever built this house originally, was a similar kind of nice meticulous person because all this stuff is tidy and they even labeled stuff. I think that's a really good, you know, it's a sign of good electrical work. So we want to stay in that tradition for our own work here. Final step is we flip it on now that we've turned the power on and see if anything explodes. Yes. Okay, and now we can leave the rest of the house power on if we're not touching the box anymore, leave the breaker off and just install the electric car charger on the wall, which is really easy. Installation. But what happens when we turn on the power now? Oh, that's so cool. Okay, we're just gonna set up the phone app, tidy up the rest of this wall situation, and then we're completely done with this thing. We just need a car to charge with it. So in the end, to finish off this job, I just drywalled this and put a nice plug cover on and we have the nice finished product of a tidy EV charger forever, complete with a little handle like a gas pump. <laughs>